Hi, everyone, and welcome to Connect to Create. I'm Kathy Andes with Simply Cards by Kathy, and I'm excited to be here with you today. If you are new to Connect to Create, it's a collaboration between myself and a friend, another Stampin' Up! demonstrator, Pat Fairless from Fairless Stamping Flare. And our whole purpose is to bring you a short video each week showing you a different technique that you can use in your paper crafting and card making. So um, today I'm going to show you how to do tissue paper watercolor. It's a fun technique. You don't need a whole lot of different things to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do the technique. And in the end, I'm going to show you two cards that I made using that technique. So I am going to flip the camera down and we're going to get started. Okay, hopefully you can see my desktop. And um, before we even get started, I want to show you the two stamp sets that I am using um, for the cards. So the first one, um, one of the stamp sets I'm using is the Let's Set Sail. That's on page 80 of the annual catalog. And the second stamp set that I'm using is, oops, let's get it over there. It is going to be Shaded Summer, and that is on page 102. So just so you're aware of which stamp sets I'm using. Now, the technique, all you need is a piece of basic white cardstock, and we're going to use a piece of tissue paper. And this is just tissue paper that you would use to like stuff a gift bag or wrap around a present before you wrap it. Um, you can get it at the Dollar General store. Um, and I have a piece that's six and a half by six and a half. And my piece of basic white is four by five and a quarter. So um, what we're going to do, I'm going to explain a little bit before we do it, is we're going to be using um, our reinkers to do the watercolor painting. Now, um, to do this, we're just going to um, crinkle this up as much as you want, and then you're simply going to open it back up. You want it to have, you don't want to stretch it out because you want it to have all those wrinkles that you're going to um, lay down on this. And you need a glue stick. Now I'm using an Elmer's glue stick and I'm using one of the dis, uh, disappearing purple. You can use a regular um, Elmer's glue stick. And just before we even go further, there's more than one way to do this um, tissue paper watercoloring, this is one technique to do it. And maybe down the line we'll show you this, um, another one. So you're going to take your Elmer's glue stick and you're going to cover this entire piece of paper. Now, if you're using the disappearing one, it is important that you don't get any big globs <laughs> of purple glue because those will show through. And you want to cover the whole paper and you specifically want to get a good coverage on the edges because um, you want your paper to stay down. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this and I'm going to go back up and cover it. Now, this would be um, an area you would not want it to... Um, like a glob of it and hopefully this one too. So now that I've covered it and I'm just going to do it a little bit more. Okay, now you're going to take your paper and you're just going to lay it down on that basic white with all that Elmer's glue and you're just going to press it down. I don't want to straighten out the wrinkles, but I do want to make sure that I have it pressed down really, really good. And that looks pretty good. So you can see the glue is disappearing. Now you want to finish these edges off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these off 
not completely to the card. Um, this, what has worked best for me, and I've done several of these um, recently, is I trim my edges down to about a quarter to a half of an inch. I just want to get this a little bit more even. Okay, let's get this all out of here. And then I take my green glue and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adhere two edges. So let's, I'm going to go the long edges and all you do is fold it over because you want it to look like it's part of the basic white paper. So we're going to do that. I'm going to flip it around here. And we're going to do the same. And I'm going to smooth that over. Okay, now for, for your shorter edges, and I chose the shorter edges because of this, I'm going to fold a little angle here and a little angle here. That just gives me a better corner. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere that edge to the glue. There's that. And then we're going to do the same on this end. So it's really a, a, an easy technique. Um, but it is a technique that takes some time, and you're going to see why in just a minute. Okay, so let's get these folded over. Okay, and we're going to turn it back, and there's your um, tissue paper on your basic white. Now, this has to dry before we paint it. And I've got some glue on my hands, and you don't want to get glue on you're keeping on your hands and work with the tissue paper because you'll tear it. So I do have some hand sanitizer here and I'm just going to give a little squirt and clean the glue off my hands. Now, I think I just mentioned that this has to dry before you can do it. So we're going to set this one off to the side because I have one here that's already dry. And hopefully you can see the nice crinkles in that paper. So what do we do from here? Well, you have to decide on the colors you want. So I chose my stamp sets. And one of the stamp sets I showed you was the Shaded Summer. So when I looked at it, I just wasn't real. I, I kind of knew what colors I wanted. I wanted something springy, something uplifting. So um, I chose to use Blushing Bride, Fresh Freesia, and Highland Heather. Now that's how I pick my colors. I pull my pads out. But in the end, we're going to be using our reinkers of those same three colors. So we're going to set these off to the side. And you can do this one of two ways. You can use blocks and take your um, watercolor painter and you can squeeze some water on your blocks and then add your ink. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it, which is what I'm going to do tonight, is I have this little palette painter that I use a lot when I'm using my inkers. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it for each color. And I just have a squeeze bottle here so that I had it handy. And we're going to add our colors. So I'm going to start with um, Fresh Freesia. And I'm going to add four, three to four drops right now. One, two, three, four. You can always go back and add more if you decide that you want um, your colors darker. The next one I'm going to add, and you do want to shake up your reinkers. The next one is going to be my um, Blushing Bride. I'm going to give it an extra one because that's a light color. And then I have Highland Heather. So we're going to add four of those. Okay. 
Now I have a paper towel here. Um, I also have a um, microfiber cloth, use whichever. And I am going to take my watercolor painter and I'm just going to mix these up. Now, I want to make sure before I go in between colors, so you might want to have something there like to clean your brush off. And I'm just wiping it on a microfiber cloth. And I'm going to go ahead and mix that one up. And and clean that off. So I'm going to set this up here at the top. And we're going to bring in our piece of um, tissue paper on our thing. And all you do is start painting. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to keep my paper towel here. I'm going to start with Blushing Bride. And you're just going to paint. And you can see, I'm going to show you two things you can see. You can see that purple glue showing up underneath. Don't worry about it. As it dries, it disappears again. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some pink along here. You can always go back, add more ink to the color, or go back and add another oh, paint over it and add another layer. So I'm just going to keep going, and I'm going to add some Move this up a little bit and add some pink over here because I want to um, mix up my colors. I'm not going to go in a row or any special um, pattern. I just wanna, want it to be random. And again, don't worry about the purple ink. It does disappear. This was one that was dry um, for several hours, actually. And you're just painting and you can see what I really love is seeing it go in the different crevices. Um, and it just kind of spreads. So let's stop with that one. We're going to clean off our brush. I'm going to bring in just a little bit more water to clean it off. And now I'm going to go in with my Fresh Freesia. Now you can wipe it off a little bit and we're just going to start adding. You'll see some of the colors run together. I want those to run together so that um, my edges kind of bleed so it doesn't look so much like it, it just stops. I'll go over here. So you're just kind of creating whatever kind of comes to mind here. Gonna add a little bit down here. And I think that's good. We can always go back over. So I'm gonna clean that off. And then I'm gonna do my Highland Heather. This one's gonna be darker. And if you want to use a little less, just wipe it off on your block or whatever you're using. Isn't that pretty? I love the colors. And there's just such an array of combinations you can do. Over here. I think I'm going to leave that blank and then let's go up here at the top. And it really is pretty when it dries. So let's do a little down here. We're going to clean this off and we're going to go back. And I'm going to add some more of the Blushing Bride right in here. And 
right in here, down in the bottom here. Okay, I'm going to go back in and we're going to add some fresh freesia. Make sure you get your edges because you don't want any white edges. And then I'm going to do just a little bit more here. And then you can go in and you can even go over your colors to try um, so that they look more like they're running, which is kind of what I'm doing now. Okay, I think we're good. So let's move this water out of the way so we don't dump it. Now this has to dry to use it and that can take a couple, several hours. If you're in a hurry, <laughs> you can use your heat gun and I'm gonna bring this in. Your heat gun has two settings, setting one and setting two. Setting one is to dry ink. So you would use setting one to help dry this. Setting two is to do your embossing with your embossing powders. So I'm going to turn it on so it might be a little bit loud. And I just want to show you, we're not going to do the whole thing because um, we're going to let it dry. But I'm going to go up here where we saw that little bit of purple coming through. And I'm just going to dry it or start to dry it. And I don't know if you can see that, let me pick it up. But that purple, the glue that was underneath is gone because once it dries up, you don't see it anymore. It disappears just like it claims to do. So this is on setting one and this is how you can dry it more quickly. Just now, if you wanted to add some more color, you could certainly go back over it. I'm going to shut this off. And I've gone back over it when it's wet. I've also um, let it dry a little bit and then gone back over it. So I'm going to set this off and let it dry. And I'm going to bring in the cards and show you um, what I did with that. So the first card I used the Shaded Summer. Um, stamp set. And here's my card with exactly those colors. Um, br Blushing Bride, Fresh Freesia, and Highland Heather. And I have it as my background and just used the stamp and went ahead and stamped it in Highland Heather. And my bow is in Fresh Freesia and I use Blushing Bride. I use some of the um, pastel dots. So that's my first card. Now my second card, I wanted to um, use the Let's Set Sail. So with that, I decided to do blues. And I pulled in my pads, and these were the three colors I decided to use, Balmy Blue, Tahitian Tide, and Pacific Point. So with my reinkers, I did what you saw me do just a few minutes ago with the water. And this is the card um, that I made with the Let's Set Sail. So mounted it on uh, Pacific Point and um, added my layer. This is a smaller layer. So just know you can make your layers any size you want to. Um, this was pre-cut and I cut um, made it that size because I didn't want to trim it because I wanted to make sure my tissue paper would stay adhered. So this is the second card. So let me bring them both back in here for you. Here's the two cards using the tissue paper watercolor. It is an easy technique and it's a lot of fun and it gives you a lot of options for backgrounds. So let me... Um, Switch back over here. So I hope you enjoyed today's technique. Um, feel free to share the video. Um, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up and that helps us to grow our channels. And Pat will be back with you next week. I'm not sure what technique she's doing, um, but I'm sure she always has something great for you. So I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next Thursday at 10 a.m.
Bye, everybody.